All right, we're going to get into the book of Proverbs today, get back into our uh, series, Proverbs chapter 13. <clears throat> but before we do, I quickly want to read the introduction. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline. And I know I say this often, but it's just amazing to me that those two go hand in hand. Wisdom and discipline. To help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose, verse 3, is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives. To help them do what is right and just and fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. So let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding, and this is my favorite part of this introduction, let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs, these parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. So it's really important to realize that we learn by exploring, by checking out, by looking and searching. And so uh, really, really, really important to understand that. So we're going to explore some meaning today and get into Proverbs chapter 13, starting in verse 15. A person with good sense is respected. A treacherous person is headed for destruction. A person with good sense is respected. A treacherous person is headed for destruction. Now I always compare what I read in, in different translations and I, I like to look at the different translations. I cut my teeth on the King James translation. I grew up with it. That was the, the translation I used all the time. And this very verse in the King James transgression, uh, translation, uh, transgression is the word that's used, says good understanding gives favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding gives favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. I, I want to kind of key off on that phrase. Good understanding gives favor. Or back up to the New Living Translation. A person with good sense is respected. A person with good sense. Good sense is really understanding. Because when we understand, <clears throat> excuse me, when we gain understanding, when we really understand, let me say it this way, when we increase our understanding, we're never going to fully understand. But when we increase our understanding, one of my favorite little jokes, and I'll just share this, just know it's a joke, ladies. Ladies, it's a joke. Okay, so don't take me serious. It's a joke. The story is told of a man who found a genie, the bottle, and they rubbed it and the genie came out and the genie was ticked. And the genie said, look, I've been disturbed three times today. You got one wish, make it short and simple. And the guy thought a minute, he said, well, you know, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I get seasick on, a, on, on a boats and I'm afraid to fly. I'd like you to build me a bridge to Hawaii. Not going to happen. Too much work, too long. No, not going to happen. Make another wish. The old guy said, well, I've been divorced three times. I'm getting ready to get divorced from my fourth wife, and I need you to help me understand women. Jeannie thought about it a minute and said, you want a one-lane or a two-lane bridge? <laughs> so I, I'm not saying we're ever going to fully understand each other, women or men. And we're not going to fully understand all of the mysteries of life. I, that, that, that's, so if you don't, don't get that concept. It's not about fully understanding. All, I'm not going to, I don't understand. There's a whole lot I don't understand. Here's the way I live by. There's a whole lot I don't understand. 
But because of the stuff I don't understand, I'm not going to throw away the stuff I do understand. I'm not going to give up the truths that I know are truths because there's a, something here I don't know why God chose to do. I don't know why this happened. I, I don't understand, uh, like I told you many times before, I don't understand how a black cow gives eats green grass and gives white milk and yellow butter. Four stomachs, chews grass, burps it up and rechews it, and we drink it for breakfast. I don't get that. I put it on our toast and we cook with I don't get that. But I'm not going to stop drinking milk and eating butter just because I don't understand it. So I'm not talking about figuring out all the mysteries of the universe. I'm talking about simply grasping, our, increasing our understanding and, and learning, continuing to learn. I got a tweet this week from one of the guys that I follow. It says, when you stop learning, you start dying. Keep learning, willing to continue to grow and learn. One of my favorite proverbs, and I want to give a couple of uh, points on this, in how to increase our understanding. How to increase our good sense. See, when, when a person um, has good sense, when a person has understanding, good sense, they, we call it common sense. We call, there's a lot of different things we call it. But they get it. They understand human nature. They understand life. They understand, you know, and, and again, there's just so much. But when you understand that uh, if you have a job, you have to show up. And you have to show up early, not just on time. You don't run in the door at 8 o'clock when you go to work at 8. You show up at 10 till, quarter till. One of my favorite football coaches, NFL coaches, was Vince Lombardi. He had a thing called Lombardi time. Lombardi time is 15 minutes early. I'm still working on that, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm still working on that, but it, it's a novel thought, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, imagine what I would be if it wasn't, if I wasn't working on it, see? So, uh, I, I'm just saying it's, it's important that we continue to learn and grow. Two keys in the book of Proverbs to uh, help increase our respect from others, to help increase our understanding, to in increase our relationship with others. Two keys. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. Never let loyalty... Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. It's there somewhere. It's there somewhere. Mikey's working on it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. Well, I'll read it. There it is. All right. Thank you, sir. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Loyalty and kindness. You write those two words down. Young people, write those two words down. They'll change your life. Loyalty and kindness. Never let them leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Loyalty and kindness. Write those two words down. And you can ask, when you go to bed at night, ask yourself, do this for a month. Write those two words down and you get up in the morning and read them. Lay it down by your bedside. When you go to bed at night, look at those two words and say, how did I do today on those two things? One to ten. How did I do today? I'm going to do better tomorrow. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Those two words right there, if you'll get them, that's worth you coming today. I'm telling you, that's powerful. Two powerful words. Time around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Verse 4. If you do that, you'll find favor with both God and man. That's a powerful statement. And you will earn a good reputation. 
You'll find favor with God and man. And you'll earn a good reputation. Now, the found, and I could preach for hours on those two words. In fact, I already have over the years. Powerful words. The foundation for good understanding. In order, and in those of you who know anything about building, you know you got, if you want a building to last, you need a good foundation. And, and a foundation for learning, according to the book of Proverbs, multiple times it lays out the foundation for good understanding. The foundation for increasing our understanding is a simple statement called the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1.7. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. The fear of the Lord, and that word fear is not some crouching in the corner, afraid, kind of, a, you know, God's up in the heaven with a big old fly flap, going to squash you as soon as you screw up. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a reverential, respectful fear of, of reverencing God, of understanding. In fact, the word there for fear is reverence. It literally means to respect God. Understanding that the breath in your lungs, one of the songs we sing, the very breath in your lungs is a gift from God. It's not your breath. It's His breath. It's the breath of life. It's His spirit. That, and the word, interesting word, spirit. The word in the Hebrew and the Greek for spirit is the exact same word. It's translated wind or breath. So when we say Holy Spirit, we could literally say Holy Breath or Holy Wind because it's the exact same word that's translated breath and wind and, and spirit. So when you, have, you and I have the Holy Breath of God in us and if God chooses to take it back, all he's got to do is go. And guess what? You're nothing but a pile of water and dirt. 85% water, 15% dirt, approximately. Without the Spirit of God in us, a reverential respect for God is the foundation of true wisdom. Proverbs, uh, excuse me, Psalm 111, verse 10. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey His commands will grow in wisdom. Praise Him forever. So as we obey, as we do, we, we get better. We, 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 we do better. We, we grow in our obedience. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The foundation, fear, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. The Holy One results in good. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. See, so often we lose the connection that as we learn and grow, and as we do things, it increases all the areas of our life. I remember in high school football, play, uh, playing high school football. Speaking of high school football, I watched a great movie last night. Miriam and I did. We've had it on our shelf for a little while. We uh, and it kind of stumbled across it again the other day and hadn't seen it. It's called Woodlawn. Anybody seen the movie Woodlawn? If you have not seen the movie Woodlawn, you are missing out on a slice of life. It was a true story of a high school football team back in 1974 when they first, three and 74, when they first integrated black and white in Birmingham, Alabama. It is an amazing story, true story, uh, of, and it's a Christian, totally sold out Christian movie. It's called Woodlawn. But in high school football, you do practicing. And it showed a lot of practicing. And they do stupid things called push-ups. <laughs> and stupid things called jumping jacks. I like this kind of jumping jack. I can do that one pretty easy. Okay. Uh, you, 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 do, uh, you, you do suicides. You run and pick up lines. And you do the five yard and the 10 yard and the 15. Next thing you know, you're doing the 100 yard and running back. Anybody ever done a suicide? A couple of you remember those back in. And now, you know, I've never, I played a lot of football in, in high school, junior high and high school. Never once did I ever do a suicide drill in the middle of a game. 
Never once did the referee blow the whistle and say, drop down and give me 20. Never once. You did a whole lot of stupid stuff at practice you never used on the field. And in our life, if we do a lot of stuff in, in discipline and learning and growing in, while we're alone in our private life, that's why it's so important that we do our daily quiet time, our daily time alone with the Lord. One uh, uh, success author I read many years ago said, private victories always precede public victories. Now, George Foreman, Muhammad Ali, the great champs of the world did not become champs in the ring. They became champ in the gym. They became champs in the workout time. And when we understand that as I grow, as I learn, as I increase my knowledge, as I increase my experience, I, I learn, I grow, and the foundation of that is a healthy reverence for our Creator. God knows and God sees. And all He asks that we respect Him. Uh, another verse I've, I've dealt with several times in the past, but I just want to read it to, uh, to, to kind of highlight it. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1 says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. I love this verse. Turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. You know an art that is lost in our culture is the art of concentration. Focus. Concentration. You ever been talking to folks and they're looking right at you and you know they ain't listening? I mean, ladies are real experienced at this because they talk to us all the time. Ah, they get it. They, they talk to us all the time. And, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, honey, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did I just say? My wife tests me all the time. She don't just take my word for it. She said, what did I just say? And I'll tell her the last two words she said. No, before that. Busted. <laughs> it's easy to hear and not listen. We, need to, we have to tune our ears. We have to look for opportunities. You know, one of the interesting things about this, we all are wired differently. We're all wired uniquely. We all have different interests. We have different things that, that, that stir our, our, our interests. That's why they, they say in a professional, for you younger people here today that are looking for a career or a profession, find out what you like to do. Find out what your interests are. Find out what you love to do so much you would do it for free and start doing it for free and finally somebody will pay you. You have no idea, no idea, some of you may, how much I love to talk. As a kid, as a kid, I got more behind whoopings for talking and about anything else. I, if you, I, I mean, whatever really lights your fire, what fuels your interest, pursue that. Pursue, read about it. Study about it. Increase your understanding of that area. I, I, I'm just, it, 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 if we Tune our ears to understanding and concentrate on understanding. Our wisdom will grow. Verse 3, cry out for insight and, under, and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you'll gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom from His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure. Oh, look at this. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. There's a place to start. Be honest. If you struggle with lying, work hard at overcoming that. Work hard at being honest. 
Well, you know, if I be honest, I'll hurt somebody's feelings. If you don't be honest and they find out, you'll hurt their feelings more. And they're probably going to find out. But when you seek for knowledge, when you seek for understanding, when you look for it, God will grant you a treasure of common sense. And, and, and those of you who, who are older and been in life, you know what a treasure common sense is. That old familiar, what were you thinking? Statement. Oh, I wasn't. Exactly. How much pain would we have eliminated had we just took a moment and thought? If I do this, this is going to happen, and this is going, to, and that ain't going to be good. If I go there, if I do this, if I go to that, if I, it, it ain't going to be good. Oh, I, I've sat with a many a guy in in the jail, in the prison, at, at pretrial, just got in and sat there, and they're just weeping and they're crying and they're brokenhearted because they knew they were stupid. And they knew that they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. And they knew that, and, and, and they just, they, but they kept doing it. And now the old excuse, the devil made me do it, don't fly. It's a novel TV line from Flip Wilson back in the day, but it don't fly. And nobody made us do Jack. We chose. Put a thing on Facebook. This week it said, we don't give, we're not given a good life or a bad life, we're given life. The choice is ours and what we do with it and how we make it. Now, I realize there's many of us who were given a, a raw deal in life. Many of us were raised in extremely horrible, abusive circumstances and, and it was wrong. And, and I get that. And as an adult, I look back on my experience with my boys and my experience in life and things that I did. And I think, how could I have been so stupid? And how I could have done so dumb? And, and, but, I, but I don't live there anymore. I don't live there anymore. I love the analogy, and I've said it several times, but uh, look how big the windshield of your car is. And how small your rearview mirror is. Don't live in your rearview mirror. Live in your win look through your windshield. Look forward. Yeah, we look back and reflect and we learn and maybe process and deal with some anger and bitterness that's still there from the, those years, but, but we, we, we got to look through the windshield, not through the rear. It's okay to glance at it, but if you look in that rear view mirror, you're going to wreck. God grants us a treasure of common sense when we ask Him. I, I tell you, I can't tell you. I, I, love, I don't even, never tried to count the times that I've stopped and said, God, I don't know what to do. I got a situation here with this, with that. I have no clue what to do, and God, I need your help. I need direction. I need guidance. I need to know what to do. I, and I look to my gut to try to feel that, that, that find that that's where God directs me mostly is that peace in my heart. And many times I'll say, well, you know, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do this. And then I'll stop a moment and see how that feels right here. That's, what, that, that, that's my perspective on common sense, on understanding of God. How's that peace level in my gut? Is it, and, and, and if I'll listen to that gut, many times amazing things happen if we just stop and take the time to listen. Verse 7, he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk. With integrity. Verse 8. He guards the path of the just. And protects those. Who are faithful to him. Verse 9. Then you will understand what is right. What is just. And what is fair. And you'll find. You'll find. The right way. To go. You ever tried to steer. A vehicle without power steering. When it's setting still. Most of you kids don't know what power steer was at. Because you've had it all your life. You've never had a vehicle without power steering. But to try to turn the wheel of a vehicle without power steering when it's sitting still is almost impossible. I mean, it's really work. But when you get it moving, it's a piece of cake. 
God will lead us and guide us and you will find, you'll find the right way to go as you get moving. As we get moving. For verse 10, wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Absolutely amazing. Wisdom, direction, and guidance comes from God as we increase our understanding of the way things are. And when we increase that understanding, it increases our favor with God and man. Even Jesus needed to increase in favor. In Luke chapter 2 verse 52, the Bible said Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Jesus grew in stature and in favor with God and people. How many of you, when you were little, your parents had a chart on the wall and they would mark you, or you did it with your kids, you'd mark the, the height. How many, you, ever done, you ever done that? Okay, yeah, we, most of us have. Okay, uh, so, so uh, the, when you were growing or your kids were growing, could you see them growing? No. I mean, it seemed like you could, but you really couldn't see the literally growing. I, I've, I've sat before and tried to watch the minute hand on a clock move. I can't see it. But it moves. Let alone trying to watch the hour hand. But the second hand, of course, just goes. We don't realize our progress. You say, well, I'm not making any progress. Yes, you are. Well, I'm not growing. I'm really frustrated. How many kids have whined to their parents? I wish I could grow up. I'm just too small. I want to grow up. Don't rush it, kids. Don't rush it. It's coming. Little by little by little, we're growing. Keep growing. Keep growing, keep reading, keep learning, keep increasing your understanding, little by little by little. There's one other passage I want to go to and spend the next few moments in uh, before I uh, 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 conclude today. Well, a couple more. Uh, one more passage, James 3. I love the book of James. It's a powerful book. Someone asked me this morning what we're doing in our Wednesday night Bible study. We're doing an overview of the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament survey, New Testament survey. And right now we're in a New Testament survey and we're starting the book of James this coming uh, Wednesday night, I'm pretty sure. So we're finishing up Hebrews, starting James. Uh, James chapter 3 says, If you're wise and understand God's ways, then prove it. By living an honorable life. Doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. See how interrelated they all are? Wisdom, understanding, good works. We, we, we often focus on the behavior rather than the belief. But if we focus on the wisdom, focus on the understanding, the belief structure. What we believe, remember my little ditty that I always say. What you hear impacts what you think. What you think impacts what you believe. What you believe impacts what you do. What you do impacts what you have. So it's important what you're listening to. Say, well, you know, I like, you know, certain kind of music. Well, listen to the words. Really pay attention to the words. Is that something you really want to be listening to? Is that going to help you further what you want? What you feel like you, 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 you're called? And got, you know, playing video games. There's nothing wrong with playing video games. But if you spend three, four, five, six hours playing video games, are they games that are going to help you increase your knowledge and your understanding of life and promote you to get and advance you in, in the career or life? Or, uh, okay. Um, whatever. Uh, are, you, are you increasing... Your understanding. Because they're so interrelated. And our behavior comes out of our beliefs and our understanding. Verse 14. But if we're bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth by bragging and boasting and lying. Boy, I could unpack that verse. That's an amazing verse right there. If you're bitterly jealous, 
Again, that underlying belief. And selfish ambition. Everything you do is all for you. You're not a giver like our Father. You're a taker. It's all for you. Don't cover up the truth by bragging and lying. And most people who brag and lie are bragging and boasting and lying to cover up the truth. So if you struggle with bragging and lying, maybe go back and ask yourself, am I jealous? Am I selfish? Well, we're all selfish, but have I worked on my selfishness? Have I worked on my jealousy? Am I really envious? Have I, have I worked on my envy? People say, well, you know, I'm not selfish. Yeah, you are. We all are. Even the noblest of us. Our, our nature, we're selfish. Verse 15. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Look at verse 16. For where there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you'll find disorder and evil of every kind. See, jealousy left unchecked will destroy your life. I've seen it, man, pastors. I've known pastors. Just jealousy consumed their life. I know, knew a pastor when I was a young man early on who wouldn't even let his wife go to the grocery store by herself. In fact, he wouldn't even let her go to the grocery store. He'd go to the grocery store far. He wouldn't let her sweep the front porch off uh, of their house because it was on a major highway. Afraid people would drive by and look at her. I'm telling you, jealousy is a cancer that will destroy you if you don't control it. Many a marriage, many a relationships have been destroyed because of selfishness and jealousy unchecked. And again, we all battle with it. We all struggle with it. It's not something that, you know, well, you're the only one that's got it. We all got it to one point or another. And some of it is healthy. But unchecked and out of control, it'll destroy us. And it creates all kind of disorder and evil. Verse 17, I've got to hurry. But the wisdom that is from above is pure. It loves peace. It's gentle. It's willing to yield to others. Ooh, there's a thought. It's full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. See, those behaviors come out of a person who is gaining understanding. A person who is working at increasing their knowledge and their relationship with God. And again, I know I hit it often, but that's the value of you and I staying in the Word every day. That's the value of that quiet time. That's the value of that, whether it's in the morning, whether it's at night, it's that value of that daily reading and getting those daily seeds, thoughts into our brain every day, every day, multiple times a day. That's the value for me of listening to Christian radio or Christian music. That's the value for me of reading good books. Keeping that, increasing that understanding, increasing my knowledge, and continuing to grow. I just started a new book. It's really been a powerful little book. I would highly recommend it if you know anyone who's uh, struggling with the loss of a child. Uh, a child who died and uh, their parent struggling with it. It's called Lament for a Son. It's a powerful book. I just went on Amazon. That's what I love about technology. I went on my phone and pulled up Lament for a Son. Boom, and there it was on Amazon. Pushed the one click by and it's mine. It's in the way, on the way. And, and it, it, it uh, I just, um, it's a really, sh it's, not, it's a small book, but it's a father who's writing laments. For his son, the loss of his son. And he just bears his heart. And, and, and you, increasing... Wow. Increasing our knowledge. Increasing our understanding. Continually growing is so important. So important. That we continue to increase. Wisdom that is from above is pure. Peace-loving, gentle, willing to yield to others. You've always got to be right. 
You always got to be right. Full of mercy and good deeds. Verse 18. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Let me uh, close with a question. Today I want to ask one question. I want to write this question down. What is the foundation of your life? If you had to ask this question, if you had to answer that question, you had to look at your life and say, what is the foundation that I built my life on? Is it money? Is it stuff? Have you bought into the lie that he who dies with the most toys wins? What, what is the foundation for your life? I, I mean, what Jesus said it in, in Matthew's gospel when he said, He that hears these words and does them is like a man who built his found house on a solid rock foundation. The person who hears these things and doesn't do them is like a person who, who built his house on the sand. It's going to crumble when the problems come. It's not a matter of if they're going to come. It's a matter of when they're going to come. Stuff happens to all of us. One last scripture. One of my favorites. I read it earlier. But it's so powerful. You ought to memorize this scripture. I'm not telling you what you ought to do, but I'm just encouraging you to... You, you, this scripture is powerful. Seek the kingdom of God first, above all else. And live righteously. And God will give you everything you need. Don't worry about the stuff. You seek the kingdom of God first. King James translation says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, this translation says. One translation says, Make the kingdom of God your primary concern. I love that translation. So I'd ask it this way. What is your primary concern? Paying your bills? Your primary concern? Keeping your wife straight? Your primary concern? Keeping your husband in line? What is your primary concern? Teenagers, what's your primary concern? When you make the kingdom of God, our pri and again, you don't just wake up one morning and the kingdom of God is your primary concern. It happens when we increase our understanding. We increase our knowledge and we grow. And the only way we grow is by what we read and what we listen to. So is what we're listening to and what we're reading helping us to grow? Would you stand? Father God, help us today to choose to turn off the distracting media, whatever it may be, or movie or TV or music that would be distracting us from increasing our understanding and knowledge and growing. And God, help us to tune in and focus on increasing our understanding. Because when we increase our understanding, we increase our favor with God and man. And Lord, my number one desire is that that favor with you will grow. So help me, Lord, to seek first, above all else, being about your business, your work, your kingdom. Doing it your way, not my way. And when I do that, I'll choose the right way. My choices will become clear. And all the stuff that we so grapple over will happen. It'll come. And we'll have opportunity to give, to bless, and to sow. I thank you for that. Help us to hear it. And God, if there's anyone among us today or listening, wherever they may be listening, that's really struggling 
with that belief in you and that relationship with you and, and, and gaining that understanding. God, I pray that you would help us to realize all we, that honesty with you is so important. Even though you know it already, you don't want us living behind a lie. And simply say, God, I'm struggling. I need you. I need to know. I, I need your help. I need you today. I'm struggling in my relationship with you. I'm struggling in this area of understanding. God help me today. And Lord, I close today by asking you to hear our prayers. Whatever that is. And help increase our understanding. God, you know we're humans and we're weak and we struggle. We believe, but God, sometimes we struggle with unbelief. So help us today in our unbelief. Make yourself real to us so that we'll know in our spirit the way to go, the direction, the guidance, and that you're listening. I thank you for it. And I commit it to you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you as you go in the name of the Lord.